Hi, I'm Will, and this is a tutorial on procedurally generating room interiors in Unity. This tutorial is continued from an earlier video, so it's recommended that you watch that one first. That tutorial went over how to generate a dungeon map, similar to ones that you see in The Binding of Isaac or the original Zelda. In this video, we will be taking the information we made to generate the map and use it to make actual rooms. Now that we have all the information on where our rooms will be, we should think about how we want to lay out each individual room. If you look closely at Isaac or Zelda, you will notice that the obstacles, doors, and other elements all line on a grid. This means that we can simplify the positions of the objects. We can think about the information that creates each room as a set of tiles. One tile might be a wall, another might be some obstacle, yet another might be empty, showing the floor underneath. So how do we make this kind of data? There are several ways to do this. The method that's best will vary depending on what you want to do. The way to get the most variety is to do it in runtime. This is a great way to get an infinite number of possibilities, but it won't feel quite the same as making our own templates. That's what we're going to be doing. It will be a mix between the handcrafted feel of pre-made rooms and the randomness of our layout. There are, not surprisingly, many ways to do this. The most robust system for this is to create our own level editor. On the more low-tech end, you could store this information in a hand-coded array or giant strings. What we're aiming for for this project is somewhere between these two extremes. To accomplish this, we'll use Photoshop as a sort of level editor. We can create images in Photoshop that fit the scaled down dimensions of our room. Then, we can place individual pixels to store data about where objects be placed. In my example, the images are 17 pixels wide and 9 pixels tall. I made sure to pick an odd number so it'll be easier to place the doors later. You'll want to leave all the doors out in the template. We'll be checking variables of the room to see where those should go. We'll use different colors to show what type of object should be spawned at a given location. You can have many different types of objects, but in this example, I'm just using black to represent the outer walls and blue for obstacles in the room. When importing the files into Unity, we'll have to change a couple import settings. Make sure the filter mode is on point, no filter, and the texture type is set to sprite. Under advanced, we need to check read write enabled. Otherwise, we won't be able to read the pixel data from them to get the information we just encoded. Create an object for the base of our room. I'm calling mine room root. This is where the code and background image for our room will sit. My background image is sized at 272 by 144 to meet my 17 by 9 room size at 16 pixels per tile. This is actually a good point to take care of some housekeeping from the last tutorial to make it ready for what we're going to do in this one. The main thing to set up before we go further is to push the map into the corner of the screen. The way I chose to do this is with a two camera setup. We make a new layer in the inspector, mine is called map, and we assign that layer to the prefab of our map. On our camera, we'll make sure that our map is always fully contained inside the camera by adjusting the size parameter. We will also make sure that the culling mask has only our map layer selected. We need to create a render texture for this camera to draw to. I'm naming mine map texture and giving it a size of 120 by 100. It's important that the first value of the texture size is twice that of the camera's orthographic size. Don't forget to flip filter mode over to point on this texture, otherwise it will look blurry with default filtering. Go back into the camera and drag the render texture onto the target texture field. We'll make a material with a shader of unlit texture and drag the render texture onto it. Then we make a new camera with whatever size works well to show the one room with extra space for the map. Then we create a quad as a child of the camera and put the new material on it. 
we just have to orient the quad so it looks correct as the map. I also adjusted the background colors of my cameras to both be black to make this look more smooth. With all that out of the way, we can finally get to scripting. On the room root object we made earlier, make a new script. Mine is called room instance. This is where most of the logic of this tutorial will be. We'll need a texture 2D to store the template data, a vector 2, int, and some bools that correspond to information that the level generator made for our rooms. We also need some prefabs for our doors. Mine will all be the same, but you'll probably want different doors for each direction. Having a reference to the size of our tiles and how big our room is in tile lengths will allow us to avoid using hard-coded numbers that are hard to read and harder to change. We also need a way to convert the colors in our templates to the prefab objects they represent. Normally you would use a dictionary for this kind of lookup table, but Unity doesn't currently support exposing dictionaries in the editor. To get around this, we'll just make a quick script called color to game object. This script won't inherit from mono behavior and it will be serializable so that we can edit an inspector. The body of the script is just references to a color and a game object. Back in the room instance script, we can make an array of our new class to easily store references to our prefabs. We'll temporarily make a start method for testing purposes and call a couple methods that we're about to write. In make doors, we'll create doors or walls in appropriate places. We'll figure out where a door should be placed and then call a method that will create the door or wall based on our bools from earlier. Nailing down the exact position of these doors was very trial and error. It might be different for you if you have different sizes for the elements of your room. The place door method that we called takes in the position of the door, the bullet says whether or not a door is there, and a reference to which door object to spawn. It just checks the bool and spawns either a door or a wall in the given position. We'll also make it a child of our room root to keep things neat in our scene. The other method called in start is generate room tiles. This is where we take advantage of all the hard work making the templates for our rooms. This nested loop will allow us to check every pixel of our template. On each pixel, we'll call a generate tile method. For this method, we'll capture the color of the pixel at the XY value of the template. If the color's alpha is transparent, we'll return, since that's a blank space. Otherwise, we'll loop through our mappings array to find a color match to that pixel. If we find a match, we'll figure out where it should be spawned and instantiate the corresponding game object in that position. We'll also make it a child of the room root object to keep it neat in the hierarchy. To translate the pixel coordinates to a position in our scene, we need to keep in mind that 0, 0 for the texture is in its corner, while 0, 0 for our room root is at the object center. Knowing this, we'll need to calculate an offset for it. Then, we just multiply the texture coordinates by our tile size, then add our offset, and add all that to our room root's position to find out where to spawn this tile. Now you can go into Unity and plug in a template and some variables into the inspector to test the script out. You'll have to make the prefabs for your walls, obstacles, and door at this point to be able to test it. After you've made sure it's working, we're going to replace the start method. We want to make a startup method that will take in all the variables we need to run this script. Since we're going to call this from somewhere else, it'll be easier to do it this way than to individually change each variable from there. Here we also call our methods that we were calling in start. This will ensure that the room does not start generating before we have all the information to do so. Now that we have our prefab set up, we need to create them somewhere. We'll make a new script on our level generator object. Mine will be called Sheet Assigner. This script isn't too complicated at all. It's mainly separate for expandability's sake. We'll make an array of texture 2Ds called Sheets Normal. As the name implies, you could have many more sets of room templates, maybe one just for starting rooms or one for some kind of special room. But in this tutorial, we'll just focus on setting up one set. We'll also want to make a reference to our room root prefab. We'll need to know how big each room is, 
which will be the number of tiles that make up each room, multiplied by how many game units are in each tile. The gutter here is just how much space we're putting between each room. Mine is fairly large, so I don't have to worry about more than one room being on screen. The only method we'll have in the class is a public one named Assign, which will take in our 2D array of rooms from the level generator. That will just be called from the level generation script right after the draw map method and start. We'll loop through every point in the array, skipping the points where no room exists. First, we need to pick a random index for our sheet array. Next, we want to figure out where this room will be placed by using the room's position variable and the room dimension and gutter size variables we just made. Then we can spawn the room using that information and call the setup method on it that we made earlier. Back in Unity, we'll want to drop in the room templates into the sheets normal array and place our reference to the room root prefab. Now we have a fully working generation system. You can scroll around in the scene view to verify that everything is working. I also made a quick script for the camera to move it around in the game view. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. There will be a download link to the Unity files for this project below. Please share this video with anyone who might be interested. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any new tutorials.